Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? So our buddy, Teague Moore, right? Wrestling consultant. He's a, he's a busy man. Yeah, that guy is a wealth of knowledge over 20 years in the game as a coach and NCAA champion for John Smith at Oklahoma State. Teague Moore knows what's going on. And if you're uh, at a loss right now and you're in a parent who's just trying to get a kid in any level, NAIA, JUCO, NCAA Division One, Two, or Three, Teague Moore, the wrestling consultant, he's the go-to right now, former head coach at American and Clarion University. He's coached at Harvard, Oklahoma State. The guy's been around the block. He knows what's going on. He's a man, right? Biggest, uh, biggest investment, biggest decision in your, in your, your child's life. So, you know, get some answers, get them before it's too late, right? Definitely. Teague knows what's going on. He knows the clearing house. He knows, you know, money. Uh, he knows about scholarships. He knows financial aid. He's better on the block. So that guy, he really knows what's going on. Teague Moore, the wrestling consultant, check him out. Jared will, uh, Get his contact information out for everybody who wants to check out the Wrestling Consultant Teague Moore. Yep, Wrestling Consultant at Gmail or find him on Facebook. All right, we got our first guest, Seth Shoemate, jumping on. Okay, so tonight we have Seth Shoemate, two, two-time Ohio State champion at 195 pounds. I believe the highest state champion as far as weight-wise in the history of Division One. Is that correct, Seth? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I no, I, I don't. I can't think of another one. I know uh, Kevin Vo was third at heavyweight as a freshman. And I don't think anybody else has been any higher than that. So a champ as a freshman, COVID year. What was your COVID year? Sophomore year? Yeah. Well, junior yeah. year. Yeah. Soph- uh, yeah. Sophomore year. My bad. Sophomore year was your COVID year. You didn't get to defend your title. And then uh, champ last year. And this year going for your third state title in, in three attempts, essentially, because you, you, uh, obviously the COVID year got taken from you, but, um, two-time state champ, um, you've pretty much won it all. Everything you've been in, you've either been in the finals of or won. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Iron man champ is a sophomore. Yep. So Iron Man champ is a sophomore. That's amazing. <laughs> you won the Iron Man as a sophomore at 195, and you won the state tournament as a freshman at 195. I don't like. I don't know if guys are doing that, you know, regularly at 195 pounds. What has been your key to your success, being so successful early on in a weight class that is normally dominated by upperclassmen? Um, I'd say consistency. I mean, everybody's putting in the work, but. At the end of the day, you want to be the one still working. But, um, yeah, consistency has been my big thing. You know, whenever I'm not losing, I'm not being consistent. You know, catches up to me. But, you know, that's something I've been working on. Everybody's got their setbacks and things they go through, and that's life. But my biggest thing is consistency. Waking up, lifting before school, practice after, getting a run in, and then yoga or whatever at the end of the night. Go to bed. Get ready for the next day. Wow. So you mentioned you're on the soccer team too, right? Just stay active. You do uh, you in other sports or just soccer and wrestling? Just soccer. Coach said, go for it. You want to see me start running? I said no to cross country. I was like, I don't want to thin out that much. Yeah. So. I mean, you've been at 195, right? All, all yep. year. So you're, you're growing into that, that weight class probably, right? You said you're slimming out, but you don't want to slim, slim down too much, right? Right. So, uh, so what's what's it looking like, Beast Mode, this time of year? What, what, what's um, your, what, um... I'd say um, prepping, really. You know, years prior, we haven't had something like this in the fall, and that's always caught up to me. But I'm glad we have it this year. No, no interference, no outside stuff to deal with. So, you know, been going hard three times a day, every single day, except Sunday. It's church day. But – you know, staying consistent, just hard practices. You know, you got to take yourself to deep waters. I like to say that a lot, but it's every single day. Can you lean back real quick? Let's see the shirt you got on. I think it's a Buckeye shirt, is it not? Uh, of course, Blocko. 
Blocko all day long, right? Yeah. Do you get to go to the Ohio RTC at all, or is it super restrictive with COVID and things like that? Or do you still get to, do you get to go and train with Colin Moore and get to be around, you know, the, the program you're going to be a part of, which is what, 15 minutes from, from your high school? Yeah. Um, they, it's, it's pretty restrictive right now with COVID. You know, they have to have certain days that are okayed by the college, but um, October 9th through the, well, that weekend, the two weekends after that, they had RTC on Saturday. And those are the only times I've been in there besides um, the recruit camp or whatever, the prospect camp they had this weekend. Uh, that's the only time I've been in the room, so. Did you, you went to the prospect camp early? Did you commit like as a sophomore? Yeah, first week of sophomore year. Okay, so so you were like what Steber did. Steber committed super early like that. Yeah. Gotcha. What was the prospect camp? You said you were there this past weekend. Good, good. Uh, Would you roll with there? Um, I rolled with uh, Rocco Welsh and uh, like Ethan Smith and Romero, and then second day, I rolled with uh, Russo. Dylan Russo the whole day. So that was pretty fun. I love it. It just doesn't avoid competition. I love it. Uh, we're actually, Fishback's going to be on. You and Fishback wrestled in the Fargo finals for freestyle, right? Right. So you guys wrestled in the junior finals. You were a cadet champ too, though, right? Yeah. So you won freestyle and cadet, runner up in, in juniors, right? Right. So champ at Ironman, champ at Fargo, cadet, Runner up in Car- uh, Fargo Juniors, mm-hmm. right? Who's number one? Did Did Tay Piccolo beat you at who's number one? Yeah. Okay, so you wrestled in who's number one. Only thing you haven't wrestled in is a world championship. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I would have gone to my COVID year. That would have been my last cadet year for UWW. <laughs> Dude, COVID screwed. I know it screwed a lot of people over. But it really screwed you over in the sense that you're not going to get a chance to be a four-time state champ, but that's everybody that's in your grade. I understand that. But, like, I really think he could have had a great showing at, like, the Cadet World, right? Yeah, I would have had some fun out there. <laughs> Those guys wouldn't. You're different, man. You're really different compared to what they're seeing because I don't know if you know it, but they let you get hip to hip a lot. They let you into their body so that they yeah. can step across and do all this funky stuff. What would you do if a guy let you lock his hands around his body? What would you do to him? Go yard and break his <laughs> neck. You would throw them out of the arena, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'd, I'd throw them into the stands. Hopefully I hear those Iranian horns. That'd be sick. Beep, beep. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, have you ever been? Is that the most hostile crowd you've ever heard? How crazy is that? I want to be there. Oh, I love I, it. I want, to, I want to absorb all of it. Oh, it's so awesome. It's awesome. And it's like they're so into it because I was at the 2012 Olympics, London, and we sat in an Iranian section. Burroughs beat uh, Gadarzi of Iran in the finals. We almost got in a couple fist fights. They were actually cool afterwards. But man, yeah. in the moment they were they were really like rabid dogs, man. Yeah. You got that though, right? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> COVID messed me up. I, there was nobody at who's number one last year. That was that threw me off a bit. Yeah, because it was normally a really good event. They used to have it at Lehigh and the Snake Pit, and it was like awesome. And that's when all these ballroom things started to come about, right? Yeah. What is that like when you're in a ballroom wrestling the other number one or two guy in the country? Is it kind of anticlimactic? Yeah. I mean, I like the momentum. I like hearing the oohs and the ahs, but it's real weird because you hear every single part of the body cracking and, you know, you got all the weird stuff going on. It's, it's kind of hard to zone in because you got all the little stuff around you to worry about. But it was a, it was a good transition for me. I liked it. It was a good experience. I'm glad I got that over with. So, so what's the fall look like? You going super 32? What, right? You're signing yeah. up for right? Is that the plan? Yeah. I'm hitting up uh, Columbus Day Duels this weekend just to, you know, knock some rust off. Uh, Feeling I'll good. There. I'll be there Sunday. I'll see you there. Wait. Um, then su- super 32. And then I'm really buckling down for Iron Man. Nice. Nice. Iron Man, we could see a potential rematch at Iron Man between you and Fishback, right? Yep. 
Oh man, you don't understand how bad I want to be in the gym for that. Like that is going to be incredible. I'm guessing they would put him as the one seed and use the two seed unless the past champions goes into it. Then you'll be the one seed. He'll be the two seed, but whatever. It doesn't matter to you. It'd be the last match too. Right. Tim? I mean, it, of course it would be. Yes. Right. Yes. To. Why wouldn't it be the last? I, match? I don't know. You I'm asking you. I'm asking. Yes, you. That's how they, they set it up like that. Yes. It would probably be the last match. I mean, yeah, I, that's what I want. Seth, what do you, what do you want? I mean, if I'm going to be honest, I want the, I want the bottom seed. I want to, I want to go through everybody. I want to wrestle all the best guys. I don't care who I rarely wrestle. I mean, I know if I want to get my one ranking back for the graduate my senior year, I got to go through everybody, you know? So, I mean, I'm already, I'm already grinding to the stone right now. I mean, strict meal plans, running every single day, you know, push myself to that limit. So, I mean, I'm ready. I mean, years, years, uh, past two years, uh, COVID messed me up. You know, I didn't have access and I, I didn't have money to travel. So, you know, it's been really cool. Everything's open back up. So, I mean, I'm really strict with my, with my body right now. My mind's at ease. I mean, I'm, I'm ready. I mean, I'm good. When did that come into play? You know, you're still, you know, high school senior. Have you always been that dialed in or kind of when did that, that, you know, switch flip? I really, I hated wrestling after quarantine, you know, going into my junior year. I was like, this sucks. I mean, I almost wanted to walk away from it. I was like, burn out everything, but you know, you know, you go through those hardships and you just got to realize it's life. You, know, you got to keep praying every night. You, know, you got to wake up the next day. You just got to keep battling. But, you know, after so many battles, you kind of fall in love with it. And, you know, I had to get surgery like a couple months before Fargo. And I wanted to really test myself. I, I want to see how far I could really make it in two weeks. I want to see what the country had for me in two weeks. So I got beat, but second place isn't that bad. But I really fell in love with it again. And three or four is fun to me. Three or four practices a day is fun. So I really, I'm really loving it right now. Life is really good. What's the well. surgery? The surgery? What is that? What kind of like puts you on the downward? What what puts you on the downward side of it to not loving it anymore? Oh, no. Um, quarantine. Just no fans, no nothing. Um, not access to anything. You coming in, you're sluggish. Your body's not used to it. You know, I. I got fat over corny. I was up to like 230. I was big. I had a little gut on me, but you know, if you, I didn't, I didn't like that first getting back into it. You know, it was real weird. It was a big change, but I'm glad everything's kind of like normalizing right now. You know, so I mean, wow. I'm really loving it. Wow. 230 and you're 201 now. You must feel like a different person. Yeah, I feel really good. Wow. That is, do this 30 pounds. That's crazy. I, I, yeah, I cut from 230 for who's number one. Holy so. smokes. Wow. But, it, but so wait, when you cut all the weight, you probably didn't feel good because it was all water weight, right? Right. And yeah, so, you felt like so, sluggish, wow. weak, you know, rubber legs. Yeah, that's terrible. But now that you're like living at the weight, you probably feel great, right? Yeah, I feel amazing. You know, oh, I had man. surgery and, um, June, I think, or no, it was like two weekends left in May. I had my meniscus surgery and I was out until like the last weekend of June. My first live go practice was um, first day of Fargo camp for Ohio. Wow. <laughs> so you literally rehabbed right into the Fargo finals. Yeah, that basically my first match back was um, first match at Fargo. Oh my God. My wow. second, yeah, my third match was number 10 K in the country. AJ Heath, you just committed Oklahoma. Match right after that, Evan Bates. So and then Colby Franklin and then Fishback. I mean, I had a heater. I, I couldn't even like walk to the finals. I had to Uber there. Holy smokes. The my body was beat, but you know, it was, it was a real fun experience. It really taught me a lot. You know, I have to be ready at all times, but. I mean, I got to control what I can control. So you've been, uh, you've been, uh, you got hurt at super 32 last year, or the year before. Mm. Um, I didn't, I didn't place that super 32 till last year. Till last year. Yeah. And I broke, I didn't break my rib, but I was going to say it was your ribs, wasn't it? 
yeah, the cartilage. So my ribs went like that in the quarterfinals off an inside trip. I, I crunched down too hard and misplaced my ribs. They went this, like, they went cross right up in here. So, I mean, I had to deal with that in the, the rest of the tournament, but I mean, it's nothing new. You got you to do what you got to do. Yeah, that's tough, though, because the ribs, every time you breathe, it hurts. Yeah. It, you can move. It, it sucks. It's terrible. Uh, biggest thing going into Ohio State. What do you have to do to make the jump? You know, we know that you you hide from no one. You wrestle all the best competition. You hide from no competition, no no tournament. You go to the Ironman. You've won it. You've won multiple state titles. Fargo, you've won it all, man. Everything you have, only thing you haven't won is the Worlds. What do you got to do to make the jump and the level change and become an NCAA champion at Ohio State? Um. I've been really focusing on stricting or constricting down my, you know, my arsenal. You know, I'm not, I'd say after Fargo, well, I mean, a little bit before Fargo, when I started training for Fargo. But, you know, from that time to now, I've really been like condensing my offense. You know, I'm not, uh, um, is it back? All right, there. Um, I haven't, I haven't been, um, I still wrestle like a feel. You know, if I'm ever in the upper body positions, you know, I can let it fly. But I've really been um, working on staying one step ahead in the hand fight. Um, you know, just wrestle onto my hooks, you know, getting to my offense, really, and only taking two shots, you know. And then you got your uh, short offense. Short offense is the thing I've really been working on, too. And I think that that's going to be my uh, bread and butter going into this year. I feel like I'm really going to start dominating, not just winning. So just really high crotch, single leg, low pick front headlock. That's all I've been doing, just working on my footwork and my, you know, chaining my hand fighting together, everything. So I feel like that's really going to be a stepping stone going into Ohio State, just really condensing it, you know, consistency again, and, you know, just keeping my head strong, ready for whatever. Jared, when we look at that, when we talk to him, we're going to transition from you, Seth, into uh, – we're going to go to Fishback. Are you going to stick around a little bit and talk to him? Or are you guys – are you cordial? I mean, you're teammates in Fargo. Are you guys good together? Yeah, I mean, I don't care. Okay. We wrestle with each other. It doesn't matter. I mean, I it's not it. like I'm not, I'm not going to wrestle each other again. I mean, I'm not – I'm not even looking for like trash talk or anything. I just, yeah. Okay. Like if we can get you guys to overlap a minute or two, that, that would be cool. But uh, yeah, he's jumping on here in a minute. Okay. But the, the, the last thing I have for you is, you know, you got a really good uh, coach Van Gundy's a great high school coach, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, who kind of cooled you off the, the, I know the feel is there. If someone comes up or upper body, you're going to, you're going to give them a ride, but who pushed you? to start the leg attacks and the short offense who you got our great high school coaches. I, you know, stated earlier, but who pushed you to focus on more high percentage offense, I guess I would say, because, you know, not everybody can just grab everybody and lat drop them or headlock them or inside trip them. Who put you on more high percentage attacks? Um, Weber. I mean, Weber's Weber's really my coach. So, you know, he's picked me up through all the setbacks. You know, he's been – he's had my back through my whole high school career, my eighth grade years. You know, that's been basically like my second dad. So, he's really the one pushing me. You know, Coach Ryan's intervening now too. You know, he's giving me tips. He's giving me tricks. He's really – everybody's really helping me there now. So, just him or Weber, Ohio State staff, you know, my family holding me down. Nice. So nice. That's a great support system you have there. Uh, yeah. the question for me is uh, whenever someone in the Columbus area doesn't go to Ohio state, I always got to ask, why didn't you go to Ohio state? I guess the question for you is it's a no brainer. Why wouldn't you go to Ohio state? Right. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. It's, it's the place to be. We're building something special. I think we're going to win it every year. I'm there. We're going for national titles. Listen, when they have people like that, like you who believe that, that's when they get into positions where they were in, you know, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 8, 2008, when they were runner up. I mean, basically every year Tom Ryan's been there, except for like his first couple of years when, you know, before he got it going. 
And once he got rolling, man, they're always in the contention for a trophy at the NCAA tournament. They've won the Big Ten a couple times. I mean, what yeah. is there to say? You know, there's it, it, it's all right there. The facility's the best facility in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. We're my class is really we're already brothers. Like we hang out all the time. You know, Gavin comes up and stays at my house. We go and get work in. Gavin Brown. You know, Feldman stayed with me before. You know, me and Feldman are good buddies. We talk every single day. And uh, Feldman and Nick are good buddies because they live close to each other. And uh, I, I just saw McCrone. McCrone's from Ohio. So, you know, we always give Ohio boys love. And then um, the twins that just committed from PA, the ones freshman state champ, you know, they're cool. I was just talking to them this weekend, you know. So, I mean, when you really surround yourself with like-minded people, it's hard not to – it's hard not winning. Like, you know, we want to get in there. We want to scrap. You know, we don't want to hold back anything. We want to make the most of it. And we're not just – talking NCAA is going to leave a legacy, create a culture that, you know, classes coming in behind us are going to follow, you know, and then going into the Olympics and stuff like that. We want to, we want to bring back world medals, Olympic medals too. So complete package, complete package. I mean, that's like a recruiting pitch for Ohio state right there. (laughs) I mean, you know that you know Iowa thinks the same thing. Penn State thinks the same thing. Do you guys talk about who's going everywhere, anywhere else, or are you guys just focused on who, who's who you got in your room and who you guys are going to be able to win with? I mean, I don't really know how to put it. I mean, everybody talks to each other. It's really just like you know, you want to you want to make something special about it, or you want to uh, be cool with your brothers. Like you want to win with your brothers, or people we've been hanging out with we've been hanging out with Mendez a lot too I hope we get him but you know my outlook on it is like we already got something special going on so it's either off on board or we're gonna you're gonna get taken out at some point that's the way I go about it nice I love it I love it that's great man that's great all right we got our we got our next guest on hang, hang on for a minute we'll keep you on for a minute here so we got dylan coming on dylan how's it going we got seth on jared myself good to see you. how's everything going in aurora uh, it's going pretty good 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 okay so you guys wrestled in the fargo finals are you going to super 32 as well dylan uh no i'm not no so the next possible matchup that you two could have is potentially iron man right uh yeah probably oh man I want to, I don't live far from there. I know you don't live far from there. I only live about 15 minutes from Dylan. How far is Walsh Jesuit from Aurora? Probably like 20, probably 25 minutes, maybe 30. Nice. So I just can't wait to see it. And I think there'll be guys like, uh, is, uh, geez, oh, Pete's Rylan Rogers. He'll probably be at the weight class, right? Yeah. And TJ Stewart's moving up too. So Stewart Rogers, anybody else you've heard of? Well, so since it's Ohio weights, a lot of the 182 pounders are going to probably 190. Yeah. So 82 and 95 will kind of be combined, basically. Oh, my goodness. That is going to be a killer weight class. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's going to be 190. Uh, Dylan, how big are you right now? I weigh like 195 pretty much every morning. So you're 95 and you are two about 197, uh, Seth? Yeah, right around there. 190 is probably not going to be a problem for you, is it? No. Oh, my God. I can't wait for this matchup. Any Anything you guys are looking forward to besides wrestling one another potentially? No, I mean, if we don't wrestle at Iron Man, I'm sure we're going to wrestle at Brexville too. I mean, yeah, it either way, it's going to be a battle for the one. So you guys are at the, you're at the same – you're twice. There's two potential matchups between you guys. Yeah. Brexville and I love it because Brexville is the holiday tournament. Brexville is like December 29th and 30th, usually like around Midlands and scuffle time. Wow. I did not realize you guys were at that tournament too. So if you guys don't hit it, Ironman, I got I, that. That's another place. That's like 25 minutes away from me. So the, I win, I win either way, man. I'm going to be able to watch you guys wrestle either way. I'm pumped. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, Seth, do you got anything else for us? Nope. 
Nope. You guys don't want to trash talk each other or anything. I, we don't want that. Not that we want that, but you guys are good. Yeah, I'm good. All I'm right. working. Tell Seth. Seth Weber, we said, what's up, Seth? Um, and we said, hello. All right. Seth, good luck, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, boys. Yeah. Yep.